At Jordan Winery, we take cork quality control very seriously. There's a term in the wine industry called a cork dork, and this generally refers to someone who really loves wine and knows a lot about wine. But at Jordan, we're really dorks about the cork. And I think this really stems from the fact that all of us have done a lot of research and been lucky enough to go with our cork purveyors and travel to Portugal and see how cork is produced and harvested. One of the most common misconceptions about the cork industry is that in order to harvest cork, you have to actually cut the entire tree down. And this is certainly not true. What you actually do is all by hand, there's no machine, you cut the bark and peel it off so the tree actually stays intact. And these trees can live up to 200 years. But in order to get a cork that is worthy of a wine closure, it takes up to 40 years. You can first harvest the bark at 25 years, but that cork is going to go for the construction industry for flooring or insulation, but then you have to wait an additional 15 years before a tree is worthy enough for a vine closure. In my travels to Portugal, one of the things I was most fascinated about was the sustainability in the cork industry. When you go to the southern Portugal where all the cork trees are, you look at a forest and it's pretty unassuming. It's just a regular looking forest. There are all sorts of other kinds of trees interspersed with the cork trees. And it was amazing to see how natural a process this was. There's no irrigation or fertilization or anything like that. And the families, when they go out and harvest, it's the women sit and cook and make lunch and the men are very well trained because it takes a particular kind of movement and action to peel the bark off. And it's just amazing how much respect they have for the industry and pride they have for cork. After the bark is harvested in the southern part of Portugal, the bark is unloaded into the outdoor warehouse space where the bark can be seasoned for a few months. After seasoning, the cork is then quickly boiled and then cut into strips. Then comes the fun part where there's these men who have been doing this forever and they go through and punch the cork out of the bark. And it's amazing how fast they go. I mean, if I did it, I wouldn't have any fingers left. After the corks are punched out, then they're sorted by different grades. Now Jordan gets the absolute top grade, and then we sort out the bottom 30% of that grade. So I think it comes out to roughly about 0.03% top of the corks is what is, comes to Jordan. After the corks are sorted, then there's the quality control where they soak and they want to be sure that the corks do not have any taint. It's called cork taint, but really what it is is TCA. It's kind of a bad misnomer for cork because you can get TCA from other things like barrels and even screw caps and other closures. TCA isn't anything that's actually harmful to people. It's just a naturally occurring anisole that can ruin a wine's aroma. It'll smell like a wet cardboard or a musty basement. Then in February, after all this quality control has been completed in Portugal and from our cork purveyors here in the United States, then we step in and we go and do our own quality control. So in February, we'll go and select the different lots we want to test, bring them back to the winery, and we do two different kinds of soaks. So we'll do what we call a batch soak. So we'll put a number of corks into a jar and fill it with some bulk wine and then send that wine out for analysis to see if it has TCA. And then we also individually soak a hundred different corks and all of our winemaking staff will go through and smell all 100 of those corks to be sure that there's no TCA or any just sort of off aromas, off characters. We also will do additional grading of the corks. We measure the corks to be sure that they're exact diameter and length. And we also wanted to be sure that there's no wormholes or discoloration or any sort of major cracks or blemishes to these corks. We basically want it to look perfect when it comes to your bottle. After we've completed quality control, then we approve the lots and tell the cork purveyors go ahead and put our special branding and vintage on there. And then they send us the corks for right before bottling and we do all of the quality control process over again. So we do the soaking of the individual soaks and the group soaks, all of the inspection and measuring as well. A few years ago, we incorporated another quality control measures, and this time it's for our 3 liter and 6 liter large corks. Before, we didn't have as much of a quality control process, but now what we can do is go through and soak every single cork. It's actually more of a uh, humidity that you can create inside this little jar for these large corks. And we want to make sure that every single large format, the 3 and the 6 liter bottles, are perfect, because it would be horrible if you had a huge party and this grand wine and open it up and it were corked. That would be a terrible situation. 
Here at Jordan, we've done some experiments and investigation of using other closures, but we found that cork is the absolute best closure for our product. It allows enough oxygen to get into the wine, but doesn't allow too much. And really, with our Chardonnay and our Cabernet, you can age our wines for a few years, so it's the best closure for aging as well. On the very rare occasion that you should purchase a bottle of wine from the winery here at Jordan and it's corked, we urge you to contact us because there's a code on the back of the label, right above the UPC code, that we can track back to the time that it was bottled, the cork purveyor, and actually track it all the way back to Portugal and find out what forest that cork came from. Although it's impossible to remove taint from every single cork, we take as many measures as we possibly can to make sure that that wine that you open is exactly how we intended it to taste.